What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Review and Preview. On today's show, what I want to talk about is one of the best, if not the best, quarterbacks entering this year's 2023 NFL Draft. But before we get started, make sure to like this video, make sure to leave a comment down below, and of course, make sure to subscribe to Review and Preview's YouTube channel at Review and Preview Sports. Now, without further ado, let's get started. The quarterback that I'm talking about that I believe is the best quarterback in this year's NFL Draft class is Bryce Young. And the question that a lot of people find themselves asking themselves, is Bryce Young the best quarterback in this year's 2023 NFL Draft class? My answer is yes, and I'll tell you why. Bryce Young, as a starter for Alabama in two years, played in a total of 27 games, finished off his career with a completion percentage of 65.8%, threw for 8,356 yards, threw for 80 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. These numbers, as we see, are fantastic. And Bryce Young in 2021 showed the entire country that he is one of the best, if not the best, quarterbacks in college football. In 2021 specifically, he threw for over 4,800 yards, threw for 47 touchdowns, seven interceptions, with a completion percentage of almost 67%. Those stats are unbelievable. In this season, Bryce Young would not only go on to win the Heisman Trophy Award, but he would also lead Alabama to the national championship game. Unfortunately, in this game, Bryce Young didn't have his best of games. We went 36 of 57 passing for 369 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions, and Alabama in this game lost to Georgia and Stetson Bennett with a final score of 33 to 18. But this season was absolutely incredible for Alabama, and especially Bryce Young in the numbers in which I just spoke about. Now, referring back to this past season, 2022-2023, we did see a step back in Bryce Young's play. In this past season, he completed almost 65% of his passes, threw for over 3,300 yards, threw for 32 touchdowns, and threw five interceptions. Now, in this season, Bryce Young did suffer a shoulder injury where he did miss a game. I believe he suffered the injury against Arkansas, and he missed the game against Texas A&M this season. Now, in this season, Alabama finished off with an 11-2 record, two of their losses being to Tennessee, which was one of the most incredible games that I think I've ever seen against Hendon Hooker, who will also be one of the top quarterbacks drafted in this year's NFL draft class. And their other loss was to LSU. But in speaking about both of these losses for Alabama, both of these losses literally happened within the final second of both the games. In the Tennessee game, Alabama lost by a game-winning field goal with no time left on the clock. And in the LSU game, LSU won that game in the final seconds of the game when they converted on a two-point conversion. Although Alabama did miss the college football playoffs, Bryce Young would help Alabama defeat Kansas State in the Sugar Bowl with a final score of 45-20. to In this game, Bryce Young would complete 15 of his 21 pass attempts, would throw for 321 yards, and would throw for five touchdowns in this game against Kansas State. Alabama, as we know, is one of the best college football programs in the country, and Bryce Young continued that tradition of performing at an extremely high level in his two years as a starter for Alabama. Now, in just covering Bryce Young's history as the starting quarterback for Alabama, discussing his stats, let's discuss some of his strengths and his weaknesses. There's a lot of strengths when it comes to Bryce Young as a player. For instance, he flourished in a pro-style offense for Alabama. He played at a very high level through his two years as a starter for Alabama. He's excellent at reading defenses. He has excellent pocket mobility if the offensive line does collapse. And one of his biggest strengths that me personally I think is his best attribute is that because he's so good at scrambling outside of the pocket, he's able to extend plays. And in his extension of plays, he's able to make phenomenal throws which allows him and receivers to connect to extend drives on the offensive side of the ball. However, there are some weaknesses in Bryce Young's game. One is he doesn't necessarily have the strongest arm. And the other main question that people have with Bryce Young is will he be able to stay healthy playing in the National Football League because of his size standing at 5'10 and a little over 200 pounds? Durability has already become a question because of the fact he got hurt this year for Alabama 
suffering a shoulder injury. For me personally, when he's being compared to Drew Brees and Russell Wilson, some of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game of football, I don't necessarily worry that much, especially because of the way that he performed at the college level, arguably playing for the best college program in the entire country, playing under Nick Saban, who's probably the best college football coach of all time. So I don't necessarily worry as much about that as others do. Now, when it comes to the question of is Bryce Young the best quarterback in this class, as I alluded to earlier, my answer is yes. And when I look at Bryce Young and compare him to the other quarterbacks that will be drafted this year, I see him as the best all-around quarterback in this year's class. When we talk about Will Levis, while he has unbelievable arm strength in some of the games that Kentucky has played this year, he did not perform very well and didn't perform well against some of the best programs that Kentucky faced this year. In fact, I believe his touchdown to interception ratio was at two to one, which isn't necessarily the best. On top of the fact, he also dealt with injury this year. When we talk about Anthony Richardson, while his athleticism is unbelievable, he's only started one year for Florida and he's not the greatest passer. When we talk about Hendon Hooker, he had two excellent years for Tennessee, especially this year, in which I talked about earlier, a 52 to 49 win against the Alabama Crimson Tide which was one of the best games I've ever seen. But Hendon Hooker tore his ACL this year, on top of the fact he's 25 years old. And then, of course, C.J. Stroud, who some have argued could also be selected with the first overall pick in this year's draft. C.J. Stroud is excellent. He's been a phenomenal two-year starter for Ohio State. In his career as a starter, he's thrown for 85 touchdowns compared to 12 interceptions. He's had a career completion percentage of almost 70%. He's thrown for over 8,100 yards, and in the biggest moments, he has proven to be one of the best quarterbacks in this year's draft class, especially as we saw in the playoffs this past season for Ohio State. C.J. Stroud completed 23 of 34 passes, threw for 348 yards, and threw for four touchdowns in the game against Georgia, where Georgia would win this game against Ohio State within the final minute of the game on a game-winning touchdown an extra point attempt. While CJ Stroud might be six foot three and is 215 pounds, he may be better suited at his size for the NFL. However, the one thing, for me at least, with CJ Stroud, why I have him as my second best quarterback in this year's NFL draft, right behind Bryce Young, is because CJ Stroud is more of a pocket passer, which in today's NFL, you need to be able to run with the football, you need to be able to scramble at an excellent level in the National Football League, especially being that C.J. Stroud is going to be going to a team, whether it's the Carolina Panthers or the Houston Texans, because I believe he will go either one or two, they don't necessarily have the greatest of offensive lines. And as a pocket-passing quarterback, you need to have an excellent line to protect you so he can make the throws that he made in his time with Ohio State. And I could be wrong. But that's my biggest weakness with C.J. Stroud is that he's a pocket passer. And although we saw that C.J. Stroud was able to make plays outside of the pocket against Georgia in the playoffs, that's really the only game that we've seen that ability of him to scramble outside of the pocket and extend plays, while Bryce Young has been doing that now for two years as the starter for Alabama. So all in all, I think Bryce Young is the best quarterback in the 2023 NFL Draft. But that'll do it here for me today, here on this edition of Review and Preview. Once again, make sure to like this video, and of course, make sure to subscribe to Review and Preview's YouTube channel, at Review and Preview Sports. And of course, make sure to leave your comments down below on who you believe is the best quarterback in this year's 2023 NFL Draft class. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for tuning in. Once again, I'm Kyle Russo, here on this edition of Review and Preview. I hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next video.